Hi everybody, it's Lou Collins. Today I am showing you a card created using two of the die sets from my new textures Wings and Things collection. This is the layering honeycomb and the layering bee and dragonfly die set. I'm creating this dimensional card. I'm doing the full step-by-step -step instructions in this video. Um, I hope you take part and have a go too. All the products are linked down below for you, both on the UK and the US websites. And I'd love it if you could give this video a thumbs up and drop me a comment. Let me know whether you'd be doing this with the bumblebee or doing it with the dragonfly that's also included. I'm starting with three squares of cardstock. These are ranging from a pale yellow through to a dark yellow and I've used the square that comes in this die set, the layering honeycomb die set, to cut these out so I know they're the perfect size. As I layer I'm going to have the lighter, the lighter shade at the front, middle in the middle and then the darker one at the back. So something that would have been a whole lot easier if I decided on this before I started die cutting was I've chosen to actually slim down two of the squares a little bit to create the domed effect. Now originally I was going to add tabs each side to raise them up from each other but I think this effect will be really cool uh, and a little bit different as well. So I've die cut into the first panel my honeycomb shape right in the middle. In the second one, I bought that shape ever so slightly to the right. It could be the left, either way. Just a little bit, uh, probably about five mil. And then on this one, I did exactly the same. I bought, I shifted it all to one side ever so slightly. So from the middle section, I'm actually going to trim away five millimeters from one of the edges. And I'm just going to do that by putting this against the five mil on my trimmer. And then I'm going to do the same on this, but this is at one centimetre, so 10 millimetres off of this one. Now this is, like I say, a really tiny amount. This means that this card will be dimensional, but not so much dimension that we have to build a big box for it or anything like that. As always, I'm using the Creative Craft Products one. And I'm going to come to the two edges and I'm just going to score the smallest line that I possibly can. So this is, uh, it's one, let me see, it's like a sixteenth of an inch, just one little line there, one little space, and I'm going to do the same on this side too. And then I'm going to do the same again onto the middle section. I'm not going to do it onto the back section though. Now my favourite adhesive for this is going to be red liner tape. I like these ones from Craft Stash because you get three different sizes in one pack and I'm going to be using the thinnest one for this project. But before adding any tape or glue, I'm just going to apply a little bit of colour to uh, the honeycomb in places. I'm not going to be doing this all over. I've gone with Rusty Hinge and like I say, just patches in areas to give some colour variation. I'm going to be even lighter by using mostly what's on my brush and on my mat for the pale colour so this top one and I will make sure that I'm going all the way to the edge if I'm going to do the outside so now starting with the middle section I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to put my red line tape just down the two edges where I've scored my slim lines so your line should be around about then your red liner tape width if you've gone with the same scoreboard and the same tape as me. Obviously, if you planned ahead more than me, you could plan to have your cardstock a little bit wider on the edges and then use a wider tape, wider score lines. Um, but I did use the die. And if you're using the die that's included in the set rather than hand cutting your panels at the start, then you are restricted to the size and how much space you've actually got on the edge once you've put your honeycomb pattern inside. So there, I've just put my two lines of red line tape down. I'm going to peel off the backing just with a pokey tool and I'll do both at the same time. Now I'm going to line one edge up first of all and put this down. I'm going to just gently lift up along the crease there, that score line that we made. Just very gently, we don't need a lot of lift there. And then I'm going to place this side down again, right against the edge. And just with a ruler, or I'm using my pokey tool here, just get it in there and just lift up against that crease as well, just to help the lift at the edges a little. 
and you'll see even just that five millimeter of extra space that you've got from the back to the front you've actually got quite a bit of dimension there now I'm going to do exactly the same with this top layer as well so there's our card base now to start work on our bumblebee now I'm going to be using the layering bee and dragonfly set this can be used in different ways today I'm going to show you using it in multicolored layers um, you could also do it in white on white which looks amazing or you could do it in uh, metallics and I've got a video on this as well if it's not already out it will be out very soon um, but like I said I'm going to use multiple colors today which is another different way of using it so you should have four layers now I'm going to be cutting the base layer from black not only is this going to provide a drop shadow it's also going to provide us with the black stripes going through the body later on the wings I'm going to cut probably from vellum or white I'm not entirely sure I haven't really decided on that yet this layer I'm actually going to cut this one from white but then ink the body just a little bit and then I'm going to cut this one from probably um, a yellow and um, sort of the mid yellow that we've got here so I'll get those pieces die cut and then we'll come back to construction so these are all cut out now I did cut two of the vellum wings because I just thought the extra dimension would look really pretty as I said a black shadow so that's the solid shape white detail and then yellow body now the yellow body is easy I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, the rusty hinge ink again um, probably just around the edges of this to deepen those edges kind of give it more of a curved look I suppose but leaving the bright yellow down the middle then I'm going to do this same color on the body of the white this is just in case you sort of peek through any at all and on the white I'm also going to take a black pen and the pen doesn't it doesn't really matter which one but I'm going to just color in the feet here the legs will be visible once we've um, put everything else down so I just want to make sure that they are coloured in and not bright white because the drop shadow at the back is black and now to cut, start constructing all the pieces so first of all the one that I've inked and coloured is going to go over the black drop shadow now you can do this with dimension if you prefer I like to just put the uh, body down glue the body down and then leave the wings lifted up slightly so just lining up those antenna and the legs and leave these wings lifted then comes the two vellum layers of wings and I'm just again going to glue those over the body area and lastly the yellow body now our bee can sit either you can tuck him right inside and sit on the back if you wish or you can bring him forward and you can actually attach him to the uh, front here I think that's what I'm going to do so he'll be attached by the tips of his wings to the front honeycomb panel and then you've got all of the dimension that you can look through there too so while those are drying I'm going to add a sentiment and I've chosen to use my texture sentiments for all paper pack I've taken this page and this has got the phrase you are the sweetest and I thought with the honeycomb with the sweet honey that's actually a really lovely sentiment to add so I'm going to cut this out with my trimmer and place that because the bee is slightly to the right I'm going to place the sentiment coming across slightly to the left I'm just going to curl the sentiment slightly by uh, pulling it through my fingers a little bit like you'd curl uh, ribbons if you were wrapping a present and I'm going to place it so that both ends have something to adhere to ensuring I don't press that too hard because I don't want it to flatten and not be uh, the same shape as the front panel there so there's the finished card I have added a panel of black cardstock on the back that does two things it allows me to write a message either in white pen or put a white panel over the top and this is going to allow me to write a, or a message or stamp a message or whatever on there it also adds contrast to the hexagons in the back so we've there got our black in there too so that really deepens the effect um, and like I say it does then allow for that message because otherwise you'd have no space for a message so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you have I've linked all the products down below for you and I'd love it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done 
already. Keep an eye out for more tutorials using the brand new Wings and Things Textures collection. Take care and I'll see you again soon.